Hello everyone. I welcome you all for the next session on All the World is a Stage by William Shakespeare. And this is a speech made by Jacquis in the play called As You Like It. As You Like It is a comedy, one of the comedies written by the playwright William Shakespeare. So all the world is a stage. It is an extended metaphor, the stage. Uh, the stage here refers to life of people on the earth. All the world, world is a life, no, a life of a human being on this earth. And he divides lives of human being into seven stages. And it is often quoted speech. And to know about, to brief about William Shakespeare, he was the greatest poet and the playwright. And he has written 154 sonnets and penned 37 plays. He was the national poet of England and he was known as the Bard of Avon, a person who is a professional storyteller. He's called Avon, a poet, a composer or a singer is called. And Ben Johnson once said, Shakespeare was not of an age, but for all time. And uh, this is, this is his birthplace, no, the Stratford upon Avon, and the second one is the Globe Theatre, and this is his place where he was buried. So these are the uh, short uh, plays. No, he wrote 38 plays, and there are plays of comedies can be categorized into tragedies histories and the comedies the speech that we are going to look into the speech we are going to see today is taken from the play called as you like it it's a comedy now let's come to the poem all the world is a stage it's an excerpt taken from the play as you like it and what are the seven stages that he makes? No, he compares human life into seven stages. The first one is infant, a child, and it's a character. And every life on this earth has exit and the entrance. Every character who is about to play a role on the stage. The stage is a metaphor of the earth as their own entrance, their own exit. Entrance refers to the birth, the time. Exit refers to the death. So a person who is made to do a role on the stage is compared to a life of a human being coming to this earth and playing the role of the name that we get. And we live at this stage. And now he divides that human life into seven parts first being the infant second being the schoolboy the third being lover and the fourth being the soldier the fifth one being justice and the sixth one being pantaloon and the last one being the second childhood the world is a stage for human being and we are all play different roles of life. In fact, human beings play their parts in life as characters that we play role on the stage. Of course, it's a simple, not much complex. Let's move on to the poem. All the world is a stage and all the men and women are merely plays. Look at that. All the men and women are 
play as we come here and do the role of the name, whatever that our parents have given. And all the men and women have their exits as a person enters into the stage, entrance, birth, and they have exit also from the stage. They don't stay there throughout the stage. Some characters come in the beginning of the play, some characters come in the middle of the play, some characters come to the stage on the end of the play. But at the end of the show, nobody continues to stay there on the stage. So stage is permanent. Only people come and do the role and then they disappear. This is the idea, the philosophy of this particular poem. And one man, a man, individual man, in his lifetime, he plays many parts. A person who plays many parts, that is seven parts that he is going to speak in the forthcoming lines. His acts being seven ages, that is seven different parts that he does. The first being the infant. So what is the characteristic of an infant? A child who is mewling and puking. Look at that. A child mewling and puking. You no, know, Making a kind of a cry and vomiting in the nurse's arms. The child in the first stage when he starts eating something, maybe you no, know, the mother's milk. So when you eat, when you give, feed the child for the first time, it doesn't accept. The body of the child doesn't accept. And it vomits. No, it vomits. And slowly, one after another time, you keep repeatedly doing that. Then it accepts. The body of the child accepts. And look at the character. And then, second stage, a whining schoolboy. Whining schoolboy. A schoolboy a schoolboy who is making a sound, high pitched cry and hesitating to go to a school with his satchel, you no, know, the bag with his, he carries his loads of bag and shining the morning face. Look at that. The morning face is, shines like the sun, bright and you no know, energy he has and it creeps like a snail unwilling to go to school. Look at that. The schoolboy has been compared to a snail. Un look at that creeping. Creeping to go to school. The child who creeps, the walking style of the child has been compared to a snail who is unwilling to go to school. And then the third stage comes. A lover sighing like a furnace. Look at that lover sighing like a furnace with the awful ballad, a sad song made to his mistress eyebrow. A lover who sings is not a song of a happiness, not a song of a you know, joyful. It is a song of a sorrow. He composed poem which is a tone of a sorrowful and made to his mistress eyebrow. Then comes a soldier who takes the strange oaths, strange promises, and bearded like a leopard, who is no description. He is bearded like a leopard, jealous in hang honor. Of course, he takes so much of risk, only he is not jealous, no, knowing that he would be sacrificing something in the field or a battlefield. And he is sudden and quick in quarrel. Of course, they are known for that. And seeking a bubble reputation. And man does things that makes him look good even if they are pointless. Even in the cannon's mouth. Look at that. Even in the cannon's mouth. Empty. Empty mouth. And then the justice comes. A justice who is known for his experience. A justice in a pair, round belly with a good cap and lined, who has a belly having the chicken, the broiler chicken, no? eaten.
with eyes severe and a beard of formal cut is Aristide, full of wise sauce full of wise sauce proverbs so this man has a uh, wise he has a gathered experience gained experience and he quotes proverbs and modern instances so he is a man who he is a balanced man who knows about the past and who knows about the modern instances too and so he plays his part the sixth age shifts to lean and slippers pantaloon a funny old man a person who does something funny things with the spectacles on nose pouch on side his youthful hose will save a world too wide for his shrunk shank look at that shrunk shank alliteration he uses no and his bag big manly voice manly voice no his thighs and his legs have shrunk and his thighs and legs have some wrinkles on the body as aging these are all the result of aging and now turning again towards a childish treble pipes and whistles in his sound as he starts speaking it's like a pipes and it is like a whistling sound not like a manly voice because of his pantaloon and the last scene of all that ends this strange eventful history that strange eventful history is the life of a human being is the second childishness second the child a person a child at the age a second childhood those people will lose every sense one after another that's why they don't act like a normal human being they become a child a child does not know what is right and what is wrong similarly the elderly people also do that and a mere oblivion look at the state of forgetting people forget everything they lose every sense one after another look at that sans teeth sans eyes and sans taste and sans everything which means without teeth without eyes without taste and without everything which means uh, finally he loses everything which means his life comes to an end thank you